Hello Rutbags, it's Jade, welcome to another Grounded video. Today we're going to be recapping all the other stuff that happened in the update. I'm sure you've seen about 2 billion videos now with the crow in the thumbnail telling you guys, oh my god, it's a crow, but there was a lot of other content added. So, we're also going to be taking a sneak peek, yes, a sneak peek, don't ask me when it's going to come to the game, I don't know for sure, but there is going to be zip lines added in the future. I'm also going to show you how to correctly use the water containers and what are all the brand new smoothies added to the game as well and new location for the four leaf clover. Let's go. Don't forget to like, make sure you subscribe. It's the grounded recap of all the stuff that you didn't know you needed to know. First off, a small thing, more of a bug fix than an actual brand new addition, but the water container has been a little bit buggy. Get it? Buggy. Yeah, you've heard that one a million times as well. But you are meant to be able to put liquid inside, which you can do using a container, but you can't mix liquids. Did you know, though, you can actually just plonk it down wherever you find some juice, and sometimes it'll pick up the juice that's inside it. The point of it is, I reckon, you're meant to pop it underneath places that will drop juice, and I'm going to show you that it does work. It's still a little bit meh, but it can fill up lots of these containers if you put it in the right spot. So here it's already filled up because it's in magically right bang there in the right correct spot but that doesn't normally happen normally it's empty so i'll put it right underneath that straw now some of these cartons don't work very well sometimes you'll go there and there'll be loads of the bubbles like you see right now but a top tip is don't go ahead and drink them and get rid of them hoping that some more will spawn so they go inside the container instead put your container in the middle of these bubbles and look what happened. I've got six droplets now inside that container. So what you really want to do is put these all over near where the juice boxes are. And in doing so, if you put one near every single juice box, bearing in mind there's five of them, you will also get the juice box buff. I've already done a video talking about all the mutations, but what I did forget to say is that it also teaches you a brand new smoothie when you discover all five of the juice box locations. So not only do you get a chance to use the juicy perk or mutation, which pretty much gives you a lot less uh, liquid consumption, it pretty much acts like the clover suit, it gives that moist buff. It will also teach you the human uh, brand new smoothie. So I'm going to show you that guys in a minute as well. But you get the idea. Plonk these anywhere where you see large droplets. It will automatically fill it up. I've tried doing it on water, but water droplets don't tend to congregate as much, especially because they're in areas where there is water, so it normally just slips inside there. And you should be able to fill these up. If there aren't like big droplets and your world's okay, you're not bugging out like mine, then simply put it directly underneath the straws and come back out of render or the next day, and you should find that it slowly fills up. So, that brand new recipe for the smoothie, well, it's pretty much all the foods that have been added properly. The Billy Hog Nugget, you've got the cookie, and then you've got the uh, typical apple pieces. If you get all three of them pieces, you will be able to make the human smoothie. There's also been a change to the uh, green gills, or liquid gills, I should say, and that is now actually able to craft. You weren't able to craft it because it was missing one of the water ingredients, so we're going to go through that as well. Now, I've been saying it like it's called human smoothie. It's human food. We're not about to drink a smoothie made out of fingers, toes, and uh, bogeys. So there you go. I've got my human food smoothie. What does it do? It does this. It gives you extra damage resistance. It's obviously going to fill your food bar up, and it heals you. In fact, it's a great little smoothie. Definitely pretty easy to make as well, especially if you go to the ant hill and pretty much raid all the food in there. You should be able to make a load of these. Now, as to be said, though, in my world, again, I don't know if it's bugged out, I've not come across any of the actual cookies or the hot dogs spawning naturally, nor any of the apples. But if you guys have got them spawning, make sure you go and harvest them and get loads of it. Bearing in mind, though, they do obviously spoil, so it might be better to make it into a smoothie. I'm not too sure if smoothies do spoil, though. Let me know if you know the answer. You will be able to make that smoothie without learning the recipe, obviously, just by playing around with it. But yeah, if you do go and get all the juice boxes in the location so it pops up on the map as a point of interest, you should get that buff, that mutation that also gives you that extra ability. Next up, we're looking at the ant potion, another new one. So basically, fill it with all the ant parts. You need ant heads, ant mandibles, and ant uh, just normal parts, I think it is. And then you can get the workers comp. What does this do? It increases your hauling. You'll now be able to carry an extra two pieces of grass or stems. So you're thinking that's maybe not that great. To be honest, it isn't. It runs out way too quick. It's almost not worth it, I guess. 
Maybe if you've got a big huge stockpile of ant parts laying around, but normally the mandibles you use for quite a few different things like tools and stuff. So yeah, you guys let me know. If you've got big cases filled with loads of ant parts, then you may be able to make loads of these potions and it pretty much means you will be able to carry two more items. The good news though is it does stack with ant armor. It does heal you and it is gonna replenish your food bar as well. But once you've drunk it, you will be able to now go ahead and carry 10 pieces of planks or 10 weed stems if you're wearing all three pieces of armor. So that is pretty handy. It lasts around 10 in-game minutes. You can see on the clock it was 37. It pretty much runs out at 47 when I'm running around and that's all I did just to see how long it would last. 10 in-game minutes, I think is literally like two real life minutes. I could be wrong on that. You guys let me know. But what happens is it doesn't suddenly make you stop moving. You'll just drop two planks or two weed stems out of your inventory while you're running along. I would love it if they increased the length for this. I'm not talking about all day, though that could be good. They should definitely make it something that lasts a good sort of 20 minutes, or half an hour. It would really mean a lot to people being able to build bigger bases and really craft something because it is one of the biggest pain in the butt going around and getting so many of these grass pieces until they bring something like a hauling sled or something like a backpack which can carry more. Next up is the water flea. I've already shown this off a little bit in my last video talking about the update and the lack of the water content and bees, but we did get another creature and you pretty much get it. Thank you for everyone that told me to just use a normal spear. I don't know why I didn't try a spear. I just assumed because I couldn't use my knife, I wouldn't be able to use my spear, oh, duh. But yeah, pick up the water flea chunk and it's gonna give you obviously some meat. Pop that in with a plant fiber and a piece of clover and you get yourself the liquid gills. Now in the demo, it wasn't the meat from the flea, it was instead eelgrass, but I've changed it obviously. So now you'll be able to breathe a little bit longer inside water. In fact, it almost puts a delay on your oxygen going down for about, I would say 25, maybe 30 seconds. Maybe you can use it at the brand new location of the four leaf clover. Here it is on the map. We're going to be going in here to get the next mutation, which is the lucky mutation and pretty much gives you critical hit chance or extra critical hit chance. So you go down here and you will find the four leaf clover and on the way, just like it always has been, there is a scab to collect as well. I'm not going to do it. I've done it already. I've shown you guys the perks. Go and check out that perk video if you want to see some more details, but it pretty much gives you a critical hit chance. So well worth picking up definitely while you're fighting on some of the bigger creatures. Okay, on to the furniture stuff. Now, there is some of this stuff I've shown off in the past, like the might carpet. It's not in the game yet, unless you're using cheats, just FYI. It may not ever be added to the game and it may not become for ages. But I did want to show off some of the things you can do with the fence posts. So you've got two new style fences, you can craft these. The one with the sprigs is pretty cheap to make. It's just literally sprigs and uh, uh, fiber uh, rope. But the other one does take a quite a lot of oak pieces. So you can put little torches on it, which I thought was pretty cool. You can light them up, make a perimeter fence, keep everything on bay and lighted. I thought that was pretty decent. Then we've got the two brand new tables. You're gonna need ant parts for them. Again, I'm not gonna walk you through. You do not need a 10 minute video talking about tables. But I did just wanna show off what it looked like in a nice little setting alongside obviously what we've already got with the berry seat and the other little ant chair and spoilers again we've got the brand new trip wires now i've shown you in the past in the test 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 dev world that we have got some of the grapple hooks. It looks like there's gonna be some sort of grapple hook system and there's points where you'll be able to grapple onto. Well, this is a bit different. This is actually a proper zip line. So it does look like they're gonna be added. Now these look pretty more technological. So I'm guessing this is gonna be something we just get to pick up. But at the moment you can make them using just one single sprig. They don't work very well at the moment. You can connect them up to each other though so you see it, but it's clearly a work in progress. The devs did say they're going to be adding a new way to get around the map very, very soon. And I don't think there's any other ways that I can remember in this update, unless we are meant to be able to get a lift from the crow. That ain't happening. So I'm guessing this will be very soon. I've got a feeling they're going to add this very soon. Again, we don't know for definite. The next big update probably won't hit until the end of September. They said they're going to do it monthly updates. And so if it's going to guess the same date as the August one, you can expect an update around the 25th or 26th September. They'll probably have a couple of hot fixes in between then, and they may even add a hit little item here or there. But the next big content update will be on that date around that time. So yeah, I'm looking forward to what we can do with the zip lines. You can't really run along the rope or anything. It doesn't really work or do anything. Last few things to note, you die and you spawn back in your bed. 
be careful you don't actually get blocked like I did. Now you can just get rid of your bed, but it's a bit annoying having to dismantle it. It does look like this is an actual bug that's affecting a lot of stuff, particularly when you're going through doors, people are complaining that you can see your face and stuff. So if that happens, you'll have to obviously just dismantle whatever it is you've got. Lots of you guys were saying that your base in the swamp area has kind of all been left floating or it's got loads of debris in it. Yeah, that's just one of them things. I kind of hope they start putting a system in. It is going to need it. When they start looking at some of these other biomes and changing them massively, we're going to need a warning to get out of there. Ark did this pretty well back in the day, and I will keep using games like these as, as examples. They actually put like a see-through um, sign or barrier, and it was like red on one side and green on the other. So pretty much saying that if he was on one side, don't build there. If he was on the other side, he was going to be okay. The changes that were incoming won't affect you. I really hope they put that in there. They've kind of got that with the under construction signs. So maybe they do need to uh, an update ahead of when they're gonna make a big change. Just put a little warning sign or a little warning area on the map. Even if it was on the actual physical map, like the, the, when you look in the actual map in your inventory, maybe that could be a way that it would just cover it over in lines and say this area could be affected by changes just to stop people losing their bases or having to do a lot of rewrites. It is early access, people. This will happen. Expect to lose your saves and stuff like that. And there we go. That is some things you may not have heard while everyone's focusing on the crow and everything else. I've gone and delivered you all the other little bits of information I think are pretty important and pretty cool and pretty unique. I'll see you at bags for another Grounded video very soon.